as you can see on the camera, you can see how far right I'm aiming, well right of the tree here. Really try and feel like I'm turning my wrists over to hit this hook. Nice full shot with a six iron. Welcome to the channel guys, my name's Ryan Moke and today we're stuck in the left trees on a par five. Now I wanna show you today what separates the good players from the not so good players when faced with a situation like this and how you can improve your par five scoring. Let's get stuck in. All right, so we've all been in that situation where we've hit our tee shot out to the left on a par five. And we can see that we're stuck in and amongst the trees. We've got no real way of going for any flags that are out there. We're just looking to get this ball back in play. And there's a couple of differences that I see with good players compared to say the higher handicappers and where you can actually learn some certain shots in this situation that can help you get a little bit more yardage out of this place. So in the game of golf, no one's immune to hitting it left or right. Whether you're a good player playing off scratch, a medium player playing off 10 to 15, or a high handicapper playing above that 25, 30 number, no one is immune to hitting their golf ball in these areas. But there is one thing that I see that separates these players, and that's the ability to get out of trouble and more importantly, get as far up this hole as they can. So some things to be aware of in the game of golf. Basically, the closer you are to the hole, the easier or the less amount of shots it takes you to get the ball in the hole. So for example, a three foot putt does not take you that many shots to get into the hole. But being 200 yards out, that definitely takes a lot longer to get the ball in the hole. So on this par five, where it's about a 500 meter par five, and we've hit our tee shot, we're about 250 out from the, from the tee block, which means we're also 250 out from the green. Now what I see from a lot of recreational golfers or high handicap golfers, is they don't have any shots in their toolbox in order to get them close to the hole from this point. What I see they do is basically they grab their least lofted club and they just chip out and they, have, they can only chip out like 50 or 60 meters, which still leaves them like 190 meters to the hole. Now the problem with this is from 190, you're still going to take three and a half, four shots to get it in the hole. All of a sudden we're bringing in bogey, double bogey, sometimes even triple bogey, depending on what you're like around the greens. So it's a huge benefit to the better golfer who's able to actually work this golf ball around the trees and get as close to that hole as possible. That's only going to leave them maybe 50 yards out, 50 meters out, and they're able to chip that ball on the green and still have a birdie putt, even though they sprayed their tee shot into the trees on this par five. So the other mistake I see high handicap players doing is they grab their least lofted club. So I've got my three iron in my hand and what they're trying to do is they think, you know, there's trees in my way, so I have to keep it low. Now, theoretically that is correct. However, we can keep it low with a seven iron, an eight iron. We can actually use quite a lot of loft to keep a ball low. So I'm going to be a recreational golfer for this shot and I've got my three iron. Now, what I want to do to hit this low is I want to place the ball back in my feet a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna place the ball back in my feet. That means my hands are gonna be in front. I'm just gonna keep my body in front of the golf ball. Okay, now something to know when you do this, you are obviously taking off the loft. So you, you know, my three iron here, you're roughly 20 degrees of loft. And what you're going to see is the more and more I shift this shaft forward, the more and more loft comes off the face. So there might be 20 degrees of loft on this club as it stands right now, but as I start to lean this shaft forward, I might be presenting 12 or 13 degrees of loft to this club. So now all of a sudden, if I was to only present 12 or 13 degrees to this, to this ball at impact, this ball is going to go extremely low it's not going to get in the air and it's not going to carry the amount of distance that I need. Now, luckily for us here today, we've got some pretty short grass, although it's wet this morning. So this ball's gonna get eaten up by that, by the dew in the, uh, on the grass. If this was long rough, a three iron just would not work because it doesn't get above the rough. It's gonna get caught. But here's what I see a, a high handicapper do. So I might even aim a little bit further right because I don't wanna hit that tree on the left and I'm just going to chip it out like a high handicapper would. Okay, so I've chipped that out. It's, it's in play, it's just short of that little hill there, but 
I've really only advanced that ball 60, 70 meters, and that's also, also on the angle. So I'm still going to have 180 or so meters left to the hole. So now I'm going to be the mid handicapper. And this player kind of has some idea of how to maybe draw a golf ball around the corner. So they try and draw one uh, around that corner, but they don't really go at it that hard. So what I see the, the mid handicapper doing is there's a white sign out there, a white cart sign that really, that's really all I'm trying to go for here. So again, I'm going to line up, ball back in my feet, aiming out to the right, maybe just trying to draw it a little bit. And that's a perfect little shot there. It's left me probably 150 meters to the hole. Okay, so that's what I see a, a high handicapper do. They kind of chip it out sideways. A mid handicapper can kind of turn it a little bit uh, and get a little bit more yardage out of it there. And the difference between those two balls is about maybe 35, 40 meters. Okay, not too much. Um, but they still are left with a long way into that hole. Sorry, I might not have been clear, but that was then a six iron. I'm not sure if I was uh, letting you guys know that, but I gained a little bit more loft for that shot. And now we go to the low handicapper or the scratch golfer or the professional golfer. Now, once again, like I just said, I've got my six iron here. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't you hit your three iron? Why don't you hit a three wood? Well, because I'm hitting the ball low, because this ball will be off the back of my, my, uh, my feet here, I've got my six iron, which let's call it 30 degrees to make things, make things even. And I'm going to take loft off at impact. But if I'm only taking five degrees off a 30 degree six iron, it's now becoming 25 degrees. Now, if we remember back to the three iron, that went down to 12 or 13 degrees. So I now have more loft. I can still hit it pretty low and I can go at this a lot harder and get it a lot closer to the green. So now I'm going to replicate that good golfer, that scratch player, that professional golfer, who basically will hit a full shot from here. Now again, I'm playing this ball back in my feet, and I'm going to try and hit it quite a long way right to left. And how I do that is I basically, when the ball's back in my feet, the path moves a little bit more into out, and I'm just going to feel in my hands that I kind of release the toe over the ball because I really want there's trees on the right I don't want to hit those trees on the right I want to bend it back to the left all right so we're going to give this shot a go I'm a low handicap player I'm going to aim way right balls way back in my stance as you can see I'm actually just going to move this stick just because it was in my way I need to aim a little bit more right as you can see on the camera you can see how far right I'm aiming well right of the tree here really try and feel like I'm turning my wrists over to hit this hook. Nice full shot with a six iron. Started a little too far right of target, but it's actually ended up okay. Again, it's about 100 to 120 yards more than that high handicap uh, three iron that we just chipped out sideways. So even though it didn't get to the green, remember I'm not trying to get to the green here. I'm trying to advance it as far as possible. And one thing I would uh, advise that you practice is use a five iron, use a four iron. You might be able to get a little bit more launch. You've got to experiment with these types of shots on the range and have that ability to, in your toolbox, have the ability to really work a golf ball for scenarios like this. You know, one little thing before we go is I see on the range so many players working on their technique, working on straight shots, consistent shots. But in reality, we've just hit a tee shot out to the left. Okay, even though you were trying to work on all those things you've been working on on the range, we still managed to hit it left. And we were still able to play these nice big hooky shots to get us out of trouble. Now, that ball that I just hit there, I'm, I'm only a wedge away. I'm only about 80 meters away from the hole. Um, so I can flick a nice little sandwich on that, on that green, still have a birdie putt. And next time I play this hole, maybe I hit one in the middle and I, I can hit a four iron or three iron on the green. Don't discount the fact that when you're on the range, I want you to play around with these shots exactly for these scenarios. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Hopefully this improves your par four play when you get into trouble off the tee. Hopefully it really improves your par five play. Hopefully you've got a better understanding of perhaps if you are in these scenarios, 
Should you be chipping out or should you be trying to get as much distance out of this shot to avoid that really long shot into the hole? If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Comment below, is this something that you do? Have you got the ability to hit this shot? Until next time, thanks for watching.